Hi everybody, this is Usha Pandit, your Mind Springs English teacher. If you are on my channel for the first time, don't forget to subscribe, press that bell notification. Give me a comment, give me a like and tell me if you want more of these videos. So today, I am going to do something that someone asked me. They said, Miss, do, do a video on Spoka. Trust me. I come from a different world, I had never heard of Spoka. So I checked it out and I realized something very simple. They have just given new names for all these things. So you have got all kinds of new names. What they have done for your competitive exams, they have just tried to make it complicated. Actually, it is the same old thing, you know what they say old wine and new bottle, it is just that. It is nothing new and it is nothing complicated. If you know your parts of speech well, if you know all your basic definitions, you understand certain things. If you understand that with an adjective, you will always have a noun. If you understand that with a preposition, it will always be followed by a noun. Some basics like that, if you know, you will never go wrong. If you have seen the videos in the past, you will know. I have always told you that it if you will have a word and then the a group of words that does not have a verb or a subject is called a phrase. And if the verb is introduced into that phrase and a subject, it becomes a clause. So, subject will have a verb and a clause, a verb and a subject and a verb. Phrase will not have those. And then of course, you have the word. If you have just got just one word in a sentence, it has to be a verb because it is implied. If I say go, it is implied you go. So, it has got a subject, it has got a verb, it is a sentence, small sentence, but it is a sentence nevertheless. And then you can say have sentences that run into three pages with lots of verbs, lots of clauses, everything joined, beautifully joined together should have, you can do, do not try to do it. But you can have really long sentences that go on for one page. Okay? So, these are basics. What the examination is trying to do is to find out whether you know all the parts of that sentence. This is their main aim. So, do not get confused, do not get worried. It is very simple. First of all, you must get into your head, it is very simple, and you must revise a bit. So, let us start. It's called, it, you can call it spoka or you can call it svoka, it is the same thing because that p and v which is different is the verb. The verb is also called the predicator. I do not know why they, why do not they just call it a verb and why do they want to call it predicator, I do not know. But this is how we complicate things, we add more and more labels and we confuse people. So, verb guys is predicator, so spoka and svoka are the same. So, basically, what are you saying? What are those? What does it mean? What does it stand for? Instead of V, you put P here and you will be fine. So, the sentence has five elements. That is what they are saying. In any sentence, there are five elements. You will have a subject, a verb, naturally. I told you that. Every, sub, every sentence must have a verb. And if it has a verb, if it has got an action, it will have a doer. So, a subject, subject, verb, very easy. And then it might have an object. So, that verb which is an action can be done on something, is not it? Or sometimes there is no object, but there is a complement. So, you have a subject and a verb which is not complete. If I say she is, is it complete? Will you be happy if I just come and say she is? And if you look at me like that, I will say, Are? There is a subject and there is a verb. She is subject and uh, is this verb. What more you want? You are going to think I am crazy because it does not make sense. It has got subject and verb, but all subjects and verbs do not make a sentence. You will need something to complete it. That com verb, word that completes it is called the complement. Complement means that which completes. Understand the meanings and you will be through. If you try to mug them up, you will have a problem. So, it has either an object which means the action of the verb is being done to something or it might be a complement. That complement can either go back and tell me something more about the subject 
right then it is called a subject complement if it is telling me if it is completing the sense of this by telling me more about the subject then obviously it is a complement subject complement I am going to give you examples so do not rush and sometimes it is an object complement sometimes I might have an object and then I might say something more that tells me more about this object. So, you can have an arc a subject complement or you can have an object complement like that. So, see it is very simple you just need to see what is it describing. So, what do complements do they kind of rename something or they modify something or they describe something and what is that something it will either be the subject or it will be the object you have to check out what it is doing whether it is describing subject or object and that is your subject and object complement. So, this complement do not get all worked up and worried and say <gasps> complement there is no worries object is very clear object and subject will not be the same remember this golden rule subject and object will be two different things when you see two different things you know that one is the subject and the other is the object ok. And then you have got this A, A stands can stand for adverb or it can stand for an adjunct. An adjunct is basically all the phrases that you can think of which might be an adjectival phrase, adverbial phrase, prepositional phrase or it can be any dependent clause in the sentence because what we are saying is that main clause that main sentence is complete in itself. Now, we are adding more masala to it that masala is called adjunct which means I can take it out and throw it out, but that main sentence will still stand is not it nothing will happen to the main sentence. If I throw out all the dependent clauses I throw out all the phrases nothing will happen to my main sentence it is a full sentence. So, that is why it is called adjunct adjunct means that which can be removed. So, adjuncts can be removed, but you cannot remove a complement complements cannot be removed because if you take out the complement that will not make sense that subject and verb is not is incomplete. So, you are completing anything that is completing you cannot throw out, but any extra masalas that you are putting into it you can chuck it out. So, basic salad you can put chat masala you can put kala namak all that is adjuncts you can decide not to put it and the salad will still remain a salad the sentence will still remain a sentence this is what you need to remember this in very brief is what you call spoka or swoka. Now, let us look at some sentences and then let us look at a few small complications ok ok. So, the basic thing as I told you is SV that is the main thing that you need you need a verb and a subject subject and verb. So, if I say J slept J slept J is the subject and slept is the verb complete sentence you want to ask me anything you won't say it's not complete if I say J slept J slept there's nothing more to ask so therefore that is a complete sentence now if I say J slept on the bed what happens it is still a complete sentence J is the subject and slept on the bed and slept which is the verb and all everything after it is called the predicate the predicate can be very long that whole thing is the predicate why is it called the predicate what is the meaning of that predicate predicate means all this is telling us more about that subject. So, J slept on the bed early in the morning till the sun came up I can make it into very long sentence with lots and lots and lots of phrases. Now, if I take all this out and if I just say J slept subject and verb there is no need for me to put so much masala, but it makes my sentence interesting and they also want you to analyze that in that adjunct is it an adverb, is it an adjective, is it an infinitive they want you to tell them this also ok. So, this is a small bit of complication that you have so listen carefully. So, therefore guys I hope you understood the predicate it can be small it can be big that J subject also can be made into a long subject how will I do that J the hard working boy J the boy who uh, uh, the boy in my school uh, J uh, the man working in the finance department on the third floor long 
everything before the verb is my subject. I can make it three, three lines long, but it is still coming before the verb and therefore that whole thing is what we call a phrase. As long as it does not have a verb in it, it is a phrase. So, if you look at all that I said now, listen to it again if you want, you will not find a verb in it. They are all phrases. So, a long string of phrases can be added to your subject and a long string of subject uh, um, uh, phrases can be added to your predicate. Basically, they remain subject, that whole thing remains subject and this remains a predicate. Excellent. I hope you have understood this much. Now, let us go to S V O. So, this is your subject, subject predicate, I have shown you two. And now, let us come to subject verb object which is easy, J loves cake. See, J and cake are not the same thing. The minute you see that they are not the same thing people, J is not cake. You know it is an object. This act of loving is being done to the cake. Great. SVO is very easy, nothing to worry. But if you get long phrases again here, do not get confused. J the man in the finance department on the third floor is a long phrase, right? Loves cake with plenty of cherries, cream toppings, embellished with nuts, all no verb in what I have said. All that is belonging to the object. It is it can be a very long sentence, it will still be SVO. So, do not think SVO is three words. SVO can be a really long sentence, but the whole thing is an, the whole thing is a object. Okay? So, it is describing the cake, but we are going to see in that long thing that I told you how many of those are adjuncts. So, there might be some adjuncts, let us check that out. Now, J is a teacher, let us we see what SVC is. SVC is J is, I told you if I say J is and stop you are going to be unhappy, I need to say something after it. So, if I say teacher, it is a noun. So, I can complete it with a noun or I can say J is tired, which means I am completing it with an adjective or I can say J is good, which is again an adjective, right. So, therefore, I can complete it. If I say J writes, J writes is complete in itself. But sometimes I can say J writes beautifully. So, I can have an adverb also after it. So, there are many ways in which I can complete this and these completions are called complements because that is, is not acting upon the teacher. J and the teacher are the same. J and tired are the same. J and good are the same. See? So, therefore, this is your SVC. As again, subject can be made long, each of these extremely tired, excruciatingly tired, tired and defeated. I can go on adding more and more masala, but it will essentially remain a complement. It can become long. Subject complement therefore, is J is teacher and J is tired, both are the same. Then we call it a subject complement. This bit is renaming this or modifying this or telling us more about this subject, subject complement. Now, what is object complement? Object complement is this. They named her Sudha. They named her. Are they and her the same? No. So, this is the object. Something was done to her. In this case, it is naming, right? So, they named her Sudha, but what about these two? These two are the same object complement. They named her Sudha. Sudha is her and therefore, her is equal to Sudha and therefore, it is an object complement. This is an object and this is the complement. So, therefore, you have got a complement and it is an object complement. They appointed her VP yesterday. So, what do you have? They appointed her VP which is your object complement and then you have yesterday which is an adjunct. 
yesterday is not part of vp yesterday is a time it's an adverb and therefore yesterday now i can continue this and say yesterday in the morning uh, in the hall on the third floor i can do this it will all it will be giving me time and it will be giving me place so it will go a a a a a adverb of time adverb of place all this masala i can put into it i can take they and then i can say they uh, loving and caring grandparents i can rename they it will be still be a subject so you can have phrases and it will be subject you can have big long adjuncts and you can of course also take the her and give a bit of description there so this is how sentences are developed and made into really long descriptive sentences that's what they are trying to make you do how does this help they're not just torturing you with a the grammar they're showing you how to write how you can make your sentences better and longer and more descriptive now let us come to svoo now this is your direct and this is your indirect object d and i okay so she threw me the ball he threw me the ball so he threw what the ball that's a direct object he threw the ball to who now whenever you ask this to who for who etc if you have a, a preposition i mean sorry yeah preposition before you ask the question that's an indirect object just remember this direct object you will get the straight answer what through what ball through what then if i have to ask to who to what and all that then that is an indirect object just remember this tip and therefore you got your direct and indirect object so that becomes s v o o you have got two objects one is direct one is indirect and then you have your s v o a now let us look at a let's look at all the a possibilities so the boy took the book that is my main clause that is my sentence the boy took the book i can say out of his bag out of his bag to school in a hurry from the library to read it all seem to be having a commonality which is a preposition this is not a preposition this is an infinitive to read see all the others are prepositional phrases but they answer different questions so that is out of the bag is a prepositional phrase clearly that is it showing you from where it came but to school took where to school took how in a hurry took and then you have from the library yesterday so you've got two adverbs there you have got from the library which is a prepositional phrase telling you which place and then it's also telling you when which was yesterday so it's got two adverbs you got a a there s v o a a and then you've got an infinitive phrase which is adverbial because you're asking took why and you're getting the infinitive phrase to read it infinitive phrases are normally have a noun function but see here you've got an adverb function so always ask the verb questions don't just look at to read and say noun don't do that it will go wrong so we said a lot about spoka so i thought i'll let me do a summary because then we will get it all together so even if i have made small little errors in what i have said it will finally become very clear so this is very important so let me do a quick summary so that all doubts are completely clear so spoka the what did i say the verb is equal to the predicator so that p and v that you are seeing that's different simply verb is called a predicator that's all remember predicator and predicate are not the same predicator is another name for the verb predicate is the verb and everything after it before the verb what you get is called the subject so before the word subject verb and everything after it is called the predicate this is something to remember so no matter how long the subject is before the verb it will come before the verb that means all of that and then the verb did something so this is how the sentences are 
structured. Okay. So, let us see, let us recap again. So, she sang, sang there is the verb, she is the subject. Instead of she, I could have had a name, I could have had a name like Janice or Pratibha or something like that, it would have been a proper noun, this is now a pronoun. I could also have had other subjects and then had a verb. So, I could have had a noun phrase, the girl uh, in my school sang. So, I can have this long phrase and then sang, it will still be subject verb, that is what we said. She sang a song, now you got she sang a song. If these two are not the same person or the same thing, then this is an object. So, remember this, do not get confused with the object. The subject and object have to be different from one another, S V O, that is what we say subject verb object. Then you have she sang me a song, which is she is a subject, sang is the verb, by now we know that very well. Me and a song, she sang what? A song, she sang a song for me or she sang a song to me. When you have this two, for and things like that here, you will get what is called an indirect object. Otherwise, you will have the, the direct object will answer the question what. If you put ask the verb what or who and if you get a word, you get the answer that is your object, direct object. So, this, I, this is your S V O. She sang me a song. Now, actually this will be a, a, a song there. She sang me a song. Now, if I say she, oh, I am sorry. I did, uh, I did this, no? This, this I did. She sang me a song. You have got your indirect object and direct object. So, what do we have? We have got what we call an S V O O structure, two objects, one direct and one indirect. She is a singer. Here you have is as your verb. Now, the singer and she are not two different things, they are the same and therefore, this is a complement. The singer and the she are one and the same person. If I say she is, it is not complete. If I say a singer, it becomes complete. So, the singer completes the sense of the subject and the verb. So, you get an SVC. So, you need to understand this, I have given you very simple sentences so that you can remember it. Now, if I say they voted her Indian Idol, they subject voted uh, verb, her vo voted who? Her. Indian Idol. Now, what is Indian Idol? Indian Idol and her are the same. So, the object and this is the same. Just as we had an SVC where she and the singer were the same. Here are the object. So, this is an object complement. So, you get S, V, O and C. So, you have got S, V, O, O, S, V, O, C. She sang many songs daily. Now, what happens is you have she subject verb and then you have what sang what many songs. So, it is actually a phrase, but it does not matter how long the phrase is, it is still an object right and then you have got this word daily. Now, daily tells you sang when and you get daily. So, therefore, it is called what we call an adjunct. We have already said that in the video, A is an adjunct. Normally, A as an adjunct gives you all the questions of what is this when in the hall, she sang many songs in the hall. So, where? Where did she sing? In the hall. She sang many songs for money. Why did she sing? Sang why? For money. And she sang many songs brilliantly. How did she sing? Brilliantly. So, how? So, these four questions when, where, why, how, when they answer you have, you put what is called an A because it is an adjunct. It simply tells you a little more information about the verb on when, where, why, how. All the dependent clauses that you get, remember, are adjuncts, will go into the A. 
So, this is something to remember when you see a dependent clause do not worry about it just call it A because it be, will be giving you more information about the main clause. Adjuncts can be removed from the sentence completely we said that also it because they do not affect the main verb they are just giving more information they are like masala this is what we said. So, I hope this is very clear once this is clear you should have no problems in doing this POCA for any of your competitive exam or for any exam. You will also understand how there are 5 elements, how those elements are used. It is a good way for us to analyze sentences. Now, let us look at some complications. She made me laugh. Suppose I say she made me laugh. Now, there will be a tendency in people to say she is the subject, we is the verb made, me she made who? She made me. Now, if I say she made me and stop, it will have a different meaning. If I say she made me means I maybe I am talking about my mother, she made me, but that is not what I am saying. I am saying she made me laugh. Now, there is a tendency for people to go and put V there for laugh. So, they say it is S V O V that is wrong. This made is what we call a causative verb. She made means she provoked me to laugh. What do you mean to laugh? So, this here is what we call a bare infinitive and this therefore is S V O O. She made laugh and she made me laugh. She made who me? and what to laugh and therefore, you have two objects there. Okay. It does not answer the question when, where, why, how, anything. So, it is not an A. When you get it want to worried about that A, you just ask is it answering questions why uh, these, these four questions, when, where, why, how, if it is not answering it is not an A. Okay. So, let us look at another one with made, this made is a very tricky one. She made me work daily. Now, this is also causative who is doing the work? I am doing the work and what is she doing? She is making me. So, she is the boss. She made me work daily. Now, look at this here this again you will get an O. She made me work, but this daily is an A because it answers the question she, ma uh, she made when and you will get she made daily, she made me work, she made me work daily. Now, this is she made me to work daily, it is not a verb, it is a bare infinitive. So, after a causative verb you will always get a bare infinitive, just remember this do not make it we whatever you do. Now, you have got another one here see she made me tea. Now, because I did so many maids you will say that is also a causative. She made me tea is not causative, making there is a dynamic verb, she is actually do, doing the action of making the tea. So, she made who? Me, made what? Tea. So, she made what? I can say she made tea. So, this is my indirect object and this is my direct object. So, be very careful, you have to practice these a lot otherwise you will forget and you will get confused. So, do not mix that up with the direct and indirect object. They found him innocent, they found who? Him found what innocent. Now, what is this innocent? Innocent is an adjective and him they found him is your object. So, you have got an adjective there. So, an adjective will tell you more about him is not it? So, it is an object complement. Oh, see, these are the complications because him and innocent are the same. Innocent is telling you something more about him, it is completing. If I just say they found him, what will the meaning be? The meaning will be he was lost and they found him sleeping in the station. But if I say they found him innocent, the meaning changes, it means he was a man who was found guilty of maybe theft and now they found him innocent. So, the meaning will change that complement cannot be thrown out of the sentence because without the complement the meaning will change. 
But this A adjunct, you can chuck it out. They are all extra pieces of information, you can throw them out. I hope I have made this very clear. Now let us look at some long sentences. So, you got a long sentence here. The captain asked us to sing the anthem when we won. Okay? So, you are going to look at the verb first. Always ask where is the verb? You have got asked as the verb. So, I am going to put verb there. And therefore, everything before the verb. So, I can say the captain with the long white beard. I can say the captain who was sick. Anything I can say. All that will be my subject. Everything before the verb is the subject. The captain and his teammates, everything is the subject. Asked. Now you come to the doing. Asked. Asked who? Us. Object. What kind of object we will see? To sing the anthem. Asked what? To sing the anthem. So, this is also an object. Now, is this direct or indirect? Asked to sing, asked what to sing, to whom, to us. So, this will be your indirect object and this will be your direct object. When we won, what is when we won? Asked when? When we won. Now, this is a clause. But it is answering the question when and therefore, it is an adjunct. So, this is how long sentences are. You decide what it is. So, it will become S V O O A. That is what you will get here for this one. Let us do another one. They asked her to sing the new song which she had learned. Again you will find this, now this is easy, this is the verb, this is the, it is a pronoun but it is a subject, ask then you have got her and you have got again to sing the new song which is your direct and indirect object exactly the way it was here, indirect object, direct object which she had learnt. What is this which she had learnt? It is telling you more about the song, is not it? It's saying which song which she had learnt. So, this is what you call an object complement. It is completing the meaning. I can stop here. I can say to sing the new song full stop. So, my adjuncts I can throw out. My complements I cannot throw out. Now, let us look at this. If I say it is an object complement, it can, it is telling you more about the song. But can it be thrown out? I guess it can. They asked her, let us see, they asked her something. They asked her to sing a song full stop, which she had learnt therefore will be, you can throw it out. It is an adjective. Any adjectival clause can be thrown out. So, it is an adjunct. Dependent clauses I told you are adjuncts which means they can be chucked out. Complement cannot be thrown out. If it was, we said it is an object complement, we cannot throw it out. But if we say it is an adjunct, we can throw it out. Possibly we do not need an object complement really, but if you take a sentence like they voted her Indian Idol, you cannot just say they voted her and stop. Yeah, Indian Idol, if I chuck it out, the meaning will change. Here, if I throw out which she never, which she had learnt, the meaning will not change. They asked her to sing a song. Which she had learnt makes no difference. It is just extra information that you are giving. So, this is how you tell the difference whether it is an objective complement or whether it is a adjunct. Also, it is answering the question which is of course adjective. We do not put it under adjunct. But it is an adjectival, all adjectival phrases and clauses can be thrown out of the sentence. Always they are extra information, unless they are what you call the defining clause. Sometimes they are defining, sometimes if you say the boy in the blue shirt is the thief, then that boy and that who is in the blue shirt becomes very important because that is how you can find the boy. So, therefore, there are exceptions to that rule when we do adjectival clauses in more detail, I will talk about it. But for the time being, I think you have got a very good idea of 
SPOCA or SPOCA. So good luck in your exams and do subscribe if you are coming here for the first time, share the video, give us a like, press the bell notification and in the comments box ask me the doubts that you have. I will put a few sentences for you to work through also. Okay. So till we meet again guys, keep smiling.